long time ago in a land just east of here. I worked with a computer, it was called an HP 3000. It was about as big as four refrigerators on their back. And, and now we've got exponentially more computing power, even just on our phones, right? And, and so technology is, is rapidly advancing, as we all know, our, our kids know, right? And, and so it's, it's really, think of it, think about, imagine data analysis without being encumbered by the process of getting the data by your user interface, those sort of things. And, and I think that's really what we have in, in Summit. And, and so we've got a lot of data analysts out there, and there's a lot of people that have either, that's their job, I'm a data analyst, or they just naturally love to analyze data. I've been to a number of customer sites. I'm, I'm pretty young with Agile Assets, but from what I've seen out there, there's a lot of these folks, and, and they just love it. They love to analyze data. And so let's, let's take a look at, at some of the ways that they're doing this data analysis. Excel is pretty popular. So if you're going to do your analysis in, in Excel, you can use the fancy pivot tables. I don't know what those are. I've never used them, but I hear they're pretty amazing. But you're going to have to, some way, you're going to have to get that data into Excel, right? And so that could either be, I'm going to write some SQL, and I'm going to extract that data, and I'm going to get in Excel. It could be, hey, my buddy in IT, he can help me get that data in Excel. And so there, there's that process there. Speaking of SQL, there's some people that love SQL. It's my mortal enemy. I have a computer science degree, and I don't like it. But people love it, and, they, and they, that's how they can do data analysis, but then you got to have a connection to the database, and you got to have a lot of tools. You got to have tools to write that SQL, get that data, and and then maybe another tool to do that analysis or report writing, those sort of things. And then there's the reporting guru, and sometimes the guru is just again another person that just they they have a natural affinity to write reports. They're good at it. When you're good at it, people go, "Hey, Rick, you're good at this. Can you help me?" Or we've also seen cases where some agency will make an investment in some reporting tool, some business intelligence tool. And it's not effective to train every single person. So they, they choose one person. And maybe it's that person that's good at reports, but they choose a person. And then that person becomes the reporting guru. And sometimes that, that creates a bottleneck, right? I, hey, I've, I've got three reports you know, already I'm working on. Yours is number four. Sorry. And then there's that, that communication. This is what I want, but does some of that get lost in translation? And at the end of the day, are you really doing data analysis? Not really, because you're just writing reports. Hey, report guy, you know, write me a report, thanks. And you're hoping it doesn't look like this, because that's not effective. And so it's really, with, with Summit, um, we, we've really got what we think is, is a different paradigm and, and for us, we, we look at it as anybody can be a data analyst. And, and what I mean by that is you, it, so we can separate the, the task that the, the, poc, whoop, the DB expert, we, we separate those tasks and that the people that know, you know, can, that like that, that's their job, agile assets, we do that, and they can get that data into Summit, and then you've got these data sets. So you've got all these data sets that now, hey, I, I want to just explore the data in my maintenance data set or my bridge data set. Maybe you want to bring in some financial data. And then you can actually take those data sets and you can even combine them. And now you've got a larger data set. And maybe you're looking at some stuff that, hey, you know what? I've never looked at this data set before. And we'll see some of that in, in the demonstration. And so the other thing, I don't know if how many of you were in the workshop, and, and I, I spent some time in there. And, and to me, so once you really get the hang of it, and that's the key, and it doesn't take long, I mean, it, it's just easy to create these reports because now you've got this data set, 
And now it's really a point and click interface to create these workbooks and start interacting with them. And, and at the end of the day, you don't just have a report, you have an interactive report where now you're, you're interacting with your data. And it's not just you that you've built this report, you can also share that report with, with anyone else you know, that, that is on the system. And then they too have an interactive report. And so it really allows you to, to take a, a look inside your data and, and get some insight into that data. And, and that, that provides you more information, better information, and that helps you make better decisions. Oops. So let's, let's take a look. This transition would be so much better if it was a Mac. So just, let's just talk about the interface for those that, that you aren't familiar with it and you haven't seen it and kind of how it works. So this is the DB expert portion. Um, so you've got your source and where you bring your data in, you create tables, and then now you've got this data um, that, that your, your experts have kind of set up for you. And then you can start creating data sets out that, table, that data and you can actually um, use a dictionary to, to combine those data sets as well. And so this is our workbook interface. And it's great because if you've got a cluttered one like I do because I work so hard, that you can just do some searching and you can quickly find what you want. Any questions so far? OK, I'll continue. Let's take a look at a couple workbooks. So let's go into this fleet operations. Ron, I know you're excited. So, and just when you come into the, the workbook, we'll just look at a couple things too. You've got some nice features up here where you can make that a favorite. You can subscribe, and this is where you edit your workbook. And then over here, you've got the capability to share. So. It's really simple. You just type in whoever's name you want to share that workbook with. They can either just a view only, or they can also be an editor as well. And so you've got these metrics that I've created for this particular free fleet operations. Um, analysis is, is really, I hope you all can see that, it's, it's a little difficult, but it's really kind of focusing on your operations and then maybe via some repair shops. So you want to kind of see, I'm doing these, these certain activities and I'm doing them in different shops, how, how are they doing? Uh, not, not necessarily how they do and compared to each other, but what about material costs, labor costs, these sort of things that you maybe want to take that sort of view, which, which is what I've done. And, and also, one thing that I like to do, and I, and I know there's probably a lot of people that appreciate this, but now you can see the data behind it. it you know you can actually, actually even export that data via CSV, bring it into Excel if you want, but you've got the data right in front of you. And, and I like that. So you can kind of just really see, okay, maybe there's something, there's some anomaly and maybe my data's messed up. I can see that right away. Let's just go through some of the metrics. Um, so we've got the top one, which is our total repair cost by year. And in this one, we've got our total repair cost uh, by shot by year. And, and again, the great thing I like about this too is when you hover over it, you get all the information that, that comprises that bar of information. You've got our, your labor costs, your material costs, and you've got some other interesting um, metrics down here, which is your total repair cost by activity and shop. So now you're looking at this activity and you can see you know, there's, a, there's some differences in, in these different shops and you can um, start exploring that as well and then you've got um, man hours and and so let's say that we're looking at our cost by fiscal year and we see that this one is is kind of high so we can actually since this is a time-based 
graph, we can we can say oh, let's look at this this time, or we could say let's just look at a smaller period of time, and and you can just start you know your graphs all your metrics have changed, and so now you can come down and say well well shoot I've got this this anomaly here, let's look at that, and so when you click that now you filter down by even more information. And, and as you hover over, you can see here's your, your costs. And, and then let's say you say, well, gosh, this, this material cost seems a little high. With Summit, you, can, um, you have drill down capability. And, and a, lot of, a lot of the BI tools, you know, if you want to build that drill down, you've got to be very thoughtful. I've got this layer. And then that's my bottom layer. And then I've got to build this layer. And that's the next layer. And that's how your drill down progression goes. And, and with Summit, it's not that way. It's, it's, it's really as simple as, oh, I want to add a drill down, bank. And you get the whole, um, you've got all of your um, attributes right here. And you just say, yep, I want to add that one. And so as you drill down, you can you could start exploring. So our, our next level is the models. And as you click into that, you can see your repair reason. And, and this one, this particular one is, is make ready. And so as you drill more into that, you can see the work orders that comprise that information. And, and you know, it seems to me that you've got all this cost in one work order, you're doing some make ready, maybe you got some new equipment and you're and you're putting some accessories on there, or you're just getting it ready to put it in service. And, and so now you can start to understand. And if you can't understand, you've got the work order information there. And that seems difficult, right? So I, I got to look at my work order. But if you were, if you had the capability of putting all that information at that granular level, because Summit loves granular data, because it's really good at aggregating that big data. And so if you have that, that detailed information, it's really great, because it's right there for you to see. And it's really easy to, to get to it. Any questions so far? Yes, absolutely. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The question was about trend lines and comparing budgets. Yes, yes. Thank you, Joe. The other thing I like is, is in the filter bar, when you create your data set, you can make any column uh, searchable. And so, by just a click of a button. I want to search by this. So if we make our activity searchable, we can just type in there. I want to look at this, this particular activity. And now you, your, your whole data set's been filtered by that activity. And, and now you can just start looking at your data. And, and immediately you can see, oh, there's some, you know, there's some spikes here. I'm not sure why that is, but it's, it's seems to be somewhat consistent between shops and a common identifier being it's from 2011. So you can also filter by that as well. So if you type in 2011, you can see all the data associated with it and you can just add your fiscal year of 2011. And you could start getting a closer look at that data and let's say you want to compare this shop, which you click there, and then let's say you want to compare it with that shop, and you want to see the information behind that. And so let's, let's look at our labor cost behind that. So as, as we go full screen, we can drill down again, and we can see we've got some, some, some um, heavy hitters here. And so now you can see here's the, the repair reasons behind uh, this particular activity by year um, by this shop, and and again you can you can come down and and see the work orders that comprises that, or you can stay at that higher level and say, okay, we were doing some wear and tear, we're doing some other, and that's really what's making up this particular cost. And 
And then let's say you wanted to bring in another year of data. And so again, you can just come in here and, and look at 2012. And you can bring that data in and you can then compare with 2011 and 2012, some, some pretty big differences. And so, you know, we've got our labor costs, we've got our material costs, we could quite easily add our equipment costs if we want. And we can come in here and, and um, oops, I gotta go drill down. And just start analyzing what's, what's behind the data um, that's making up those activities and, and these particular years. And, and so, as I said, it's, it's really easy to add some more metrics on this page to, to really see what, what your particular situation is. Any questions on the operations analysis? Let's look at another workbook. This is fun. Let's look at some replacement analysis. This is, um, this is pretty rudimentary for the fleet folks out there, right? I mean, it's just pretty simple, you know, age and then miles, right? So you'll notice that we've got a filter that's built into the workbook at the very top, and, and that's if we're going to do replacement analysis, we want to make sure that we're looking at our active in-service vehicles because if they're out of service, well, they've been replaced most likely, right? And so we, the, these are metrics that I created. Um, and so the, the information we're looking at, the manufacturing, the models, and total cost by models. And then th this is all of our districts and the fleet. And then I just had a little KPI down here, which, which we're looking at the whole agency at this point. So we, we're, we're getting a value count of our equipment and then a, a total cost of, of that equipment as well. But we can easily, again, look at our filters. So let's say we've got some funding sources. And we want to look at that information in the context of a funding source. So I've, I've got this airport project. And, and I want to just look at information that regarding under the context of that funding source or that project. And so that you could just simply click that filter, and then it filters all the data in the workbook. And so now you've got a view, essentially, of that project itself. And so if, if we look at our end of useful life, we can see that we've got a spike here. And, and it looks like, I don't know if you can see that grayed out text, but in September of this year, it looks like we're going to have a lot of vehicles that may need re replacing at that point. And again, as we hovered over there, we could see that it's 28 vehicles. Um, and so if we want to go further into that, what's going to happen? What do I need to plan for in the future? We can, again, drag it across that timeline. And now we can see all of the models by district. So as we hover over it, we could see that you know, the Northeast District, they got 14 coming up. The Northwest has 15. And, and so now you get an idea of, of, of district by district, you know, what's comprising that. And as an agency, you also can see as a whole. And then you can look at the models that are comprising that information. So if you have this particular model, the AK-2001, you can see that that's really focused between um, these two district, districts, and, and the other districts aren't affected by this um, age. And then if we hop over to the miles exceeding replacement, if, again, if we hover over that, it, it's, a, it's a big row. It's a big number. And a million miles over, you know, what our, our mileage limit was, that's a lot. And, and so as we, as we filter down by that, 
we can again see the, the information that comprises that and, and look by district um, how that's going to affect us as, as an agency. And so, yeah, looking at it separately is, is pretty good. And then you, you may want to um, look at them as a whole. Like overall, what, what am I being affected by my useful life and my replacement miles? And so I created in my data set a, just a, a flag, yes, no flag. So if my miles is exceeding my mileage limit, yes. And so I, I created those in, a, in one minute. And I called it age exceeded. And then I also called the one for mileage, mileage exceeded. And it's that simple, I made it searchable. And now, I get an overall view of all of my replacements. And so as I look down at my KPI, I can see that's 44 pieces of equipment. And, and so I don't, maybe that's an insignificant for your fleet size, and maybe it's not, I don't know. But you can see that the Northeast District here, it's got almost half of, of that, those vehicles that, that need to be replaced. And so that, that could be significant. Any questions on the replacement analysis? Maybe some suggestions for my next workbook or Golem's next workbook. So that's, that's a lot of fleet stuff, and I know the fleet people are are happy about that. We, we created another one. I actually created a maintenance one, but um, it got deleted last night. I was super happy about that. But we've got so many more because we've, we've worked with Summit. And I, I find it um, actually quite interesting to work with the product and to load data in it. Um, so let's, let's look at another one that we do have. I'm in data sets, that's why I can't find it. Our 10-year, good, fair, poor, um, a bunch of condition data that we can see. So pretty interesting where we, we look at our lane miles that assessed as they progress through the years. I mean, it steadily just goes up, and, and, and so I'm sure that's common. And this is a kind of a newer feature where we have this very wide graph, but if you have a very wide graph, it, it gets distorted. And so now um, the new metric folks have put in the slider, which I love, and then you can just say, I wanted to just see the end. I want to see uh, in 2016. And, and so let's say that you, uh, and we've got some trending here, so we could see that we're trending up, uh, we're trending down a little bit. And you can, you, can make, you can focus that on interstate routes and just filter all that information. Maybe there's some divisions that don't have a lot of interstate routes. Or you can just do it by division itself. And things like division and our local routes. And then you can do it by year and by county and you know, you get the idea. So, so the filters are really easy. You just go and say, I want to filter. You choose what you want to filter on. You choose whether you want it to a partition, a pie graph, this type of filter. Um, pretty simple. And these are some example um, workbooks that we've done for, for our customers. The other thing that I, that I think's pretty exciting is we're, we're doing um, some mapping capabilities. And so everyone loves maps, and I, I think this is an exciting um, territory because the concept, which, which we love, carries over into maps. So if we, we, we could see all the work that we're doing in this area, and then if we just want to filter that, we can do that. And so we, we can visually now see 
hey, where are we doing this particular activity in, in our state? And, and so you have that filter capability, but, but now it's on a map. And so um, I think that's pretty exciting. Uh, so this is pretty new technology um, for this platform, but, but I think it, it'll be, at the end of the day, it'll be really nice to be able to utilize that as well. What else? Anything? Any other questions about the, the platform itself? I mean, really, for us, it's, it's about all of your asset data. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, we can put it in here, and, and we can, we can, um, you can analyze it. And, and so we've got the infrastructure within our application to push that data. Um, it's just a matter of configuration. And then we can push that data into Summit, and then it's ready for you. And, and we have a job that will continuously update that data at whatever frequency you want. And so it makes it really nice. You don't have to do anything. It just works. Any questions? If you, if you hold out a bit oh, for our friends on live stream. You must be under scrutiny. So we have our see, bus system, you know, asset management system with schema with everything there, uh, with some views and whatnot. So now we want reporting in, in Summit. Mm -hmm. So what it will take from that point to Summit, we have to create uh, some special views for what we want to see in Summit. We have to conceive in advance what we want to see in Summit, obviously, and have some, uh, uh, and if there are views, they are they still stay in the main schema. Because I just heard you say something about pushing data in Summit, or data is migrating from main applica uh, database to another database, and then we are uh, uh, getting reports from that. So, so what exactly is that flow, just for our information? So, um I'm a pre-sales engineer. Um, I know how it works because I'm also a software engineer. But it's really, you know, that's, that's product's decision. But from my perspective and working with, with Summit, um, again, it loves that detailed atomic level data because that's where you got the details. And at the end of the day, that's what you want is the details. Because I, I want to understand why am I seeing these anomalies? You know, why why am I seeing you know this cost going higher? You know, what's the difference? And unless you have that detail, you know, you're you're really not going to understand. And so so that's my answer. But you know, I, I would say you know Kingsley has to build the infrastructure for that. And I know they've done a lot of work in in that respect. And so um, that's a short answer for. I don't know what product is. Rick, I was just going to ask you, I, I saw that uh, North Carolina data up there. Um, so was that all the North Carolina work orders? I mean, you know, obviously filtered, you had it filtered to one, one activity there, but that's quite impressive if, if yeah, you let's get, look. get that many, many work orders out there pretty quickly. I, I will tell you how that came about, Charles. Um, well, we, we went to North Carolina. They had a lot of data, a lot of reports that they're doing, and, and we um, were talking about Summit, and they said, well, hey, these are the reports that we're doing. You know, how would that work in Summit? And so um, I took, took a lot of that, and, and I put it in Summit and, and represented that data. Um, but the, the problem with that, 24,000 rows, so that's not that much, but the problem with that is that in North Carolina, not just North Carolina, but I'm sure every agency is, they, they've had this culture where they're doing that work, and they, it, I'm just so impressed by it. You should see some of these SQL queries. I mean, I was amazed how amazing they were. Very detailed, but it's all there to aggregate that data. And so as I look at these queries and I run them against the schema, 
it's aggregating that data for me. That, I don't want that, right? I want it the low level data. And so I had to deconstruct those queries and take out some of those where clauses. So give me the full data set because because we're breaking it, you know, they want to break it down by the different districts and that, that sort of stuff, understandably, right? Uh, but I don't want that in Summit. And so I had to do that. And, you know, I didn't have enough time to really go to the lowest level and then reconstruct all these. Uh, I wanted to make some representative uh, metrics for them. I, I kind of asked you this already, but I'll, I'll ask you again so that everyone can hear it. But you know, because it's a URL up there, um, it seems like you know that could just be on a phone or on a tablet. Uh, so um, you know, responsive design, uh, just just to kind of confirm that, it's, it seems like a very yep. useful thing Jacob's to have out there on the head, field so. on your phone, kind of thing. <laughs> um, I use my phone for Facebook, and that's also Jacob. Uh, since it is uh, a URL, you can just hop on your phone, go to the URL, you can select the workbook you're looking for. Um, you can even click on the charts to filter. Um, the functionality is the same. It's a good question. Yep. Andrew. Would this be able to map out hot spots of maintenance, maintenance expenditures to where they're doing lots of rockfall cleanup, lots of ditch cleaning or landslides or slope repair, that kind of thing? Could you pick that out of the data with this tool and map it? Yeah, absolutely. When you're talking from a data perspective, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you're talking about like heat maps with regard to, let's say, a map mapping capabilities. I'm yeah, not... I want to map. Yeah, see, see, I'd like to see it on a map, kind of like you had up there, where it's showing hot spots of they have an abnormally large expenditure at this location for this type of problem. I, I don't. I'm not familiar enough with the mapping capabilities at this point. Yeah, go ahead, Jacob. So one thing that you can do with the mapping, especially if you're wanting to see kind of a heat map uh, by expenditure, is that you can just color the map segments based on uh, expenditure. So per row of data will have an expenditure along with it. And so um, if you color them based on expenditure, you'll get a, a legend and a variety of different colors that you can then identify those spots. You need, you need. <laughs> the people online do. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Rick. We can't hear you in hey, Rick. Missouri. Uh, I've had some customers ask some questions. What's the delineator between using this and Jasper Reports? Where should you use one over the other? Um, so Jasper, you know, for me, it, it takes some, some configuration, and it takes, in my opinion, um, a lot more knowledge about the platform. And Jasper is a SQL based reporting. And if you love set theory, that's your reporting engine because you can love SQL. But um, if you don't know SQL, then you, 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 you're, you may struggle a little bit with the Jasper reports. But with Summit, you're, you're point and click. I mean, that's it. And, and once you understand, OK, as I'm creating this metric, and I want, I know, understand what my x-axis and what my y-axis is. Um, you, it's literally point and click, and now you're building this metric. And so I think that's the difference. And, and of course, I think Jasper would be better if you have some forms that, that you need to create and those sort of things. And, and so, yeah. So Jasper Reports is uh, embedded in the Agile Access application. So that's targeted to like people that are familiar with the system. So your regular users that are using the Agile Access AMS application when they're doing their uh, work, so division managers or maintenance engineers are doing their work, looking at the reports that, that reflects that work. Summit is more targeted to stakeholders. So you have leaders in the agency 
people that want to see high level reports of how the system is performing or how their assets are performing. Um, and so they want to self serve and get those reports out of the system without needing to know the f technical liability or functionality of the a AMS application, the Agile Assets application. So they can go to Summit, create those reports on their own, and then consume it right there and then. And if they have further questions, rather than going to their expert in the Agile Assets application, they can, you know, do those queries as, as Rick was showing earlier and get those answers without needing to go to the expert that knows about the technical dependencies of the Agile Assets application. So two different sets of users. More, one is more for, some of it is more for the stakeholders, for managers that want to serve serve and get those reports on their own, whereas Jasper Reports is more embedded inside the Agile Assets application for people that are familiar with that function and doing the work in the Agile Assets application. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Tom has a question. What about the printout of, uh, of these types of reports? Is this, a, I mean, this is very good for visual, very quick. Uh, you can get a lot of information and, and you can go back and forth. But uh, there are people who want a piece of paper when you're done. Uh, how is the, cap the printing capability of this? Doing my work out here. So like we were saying earlier, it's just a browser. It's, it's a web application. So you can just hit the, pro, uh, the print option from the web browser and print out the, the, the graphs that you want to see, all the charts that you want to see. Or you can, you can download the chart as well as, as a visual. And, and you can do that as well. You right. can, and you can ex export the data behind that if, if right. you want. If you wanted to embed that in a the, in the PowerPoint report or something. Thanks. There's a subscribe button up top. Um, as you subscribe, you can set a time frequency and have those emailed to you. Um, <clears throat> uh, your email, you can then take the pieces in the email and um, download those or print those to put them in a PDF if you want it organized. But you can get it um, emailed to you. And just to reiterate, one of the really cool things that I thought when I'm using this thing is um, for especially for those of you who use Excel, and every time you have a different data set, you have to go create another graph, right? If you use the filters, the filters apply to all the graphs. So every time you use a filter, all the graphs change. So your graph production capability is greatly uh, increased. You know, like for people who want hard copies and things like that, you can put together a pretty uh, thorough report in a lot less time because you're not having to do them one by one because if you want to, if you have 10 districts in your state and you got a report on each district, okay, you do an overall, you filter district one, all your graphs change to district one, print those suckers out or send them to PDF, district two, compare a couple of districts. You can do all of that without having to create each graph one by one because they're all linked together. So from a time saving perspective, you know, I used to work at the DOT, so that's what I'm looking for is time saving. So, um, you know, really valuable piece of uh, software right there in terms of time saving. Any last question for Ray, Jacob, or Kinsley? What would you say the learning curve? Um, that's a good question. Learning curve for me, um, it's it's. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right, Joe. Um, what would be what would you say the learning curve for the use of Summit would be for someone with average computer skills? And and for me, I, I would say within an hour you can you can really learn about it and start creating. Uh, really effective um, workbooks. And, and so to get the full, um, all of the different capabilities, it'd probably take longer because they are, there are so many. But to, to get in there and get effective data analysis, I'd say an hour or two, and you start understanding how it works because it's, again, it's point and click. You can't break it. 
you can't break it, and, and I've tried. And, and that's, that's one of the things that, that I've been impressed about is it, it's really a, a very stable platform. And just real quick, one other thing I really like about software is they have this, uh, the mapping capability, right? And uh, we put some safety data on there, like some crash data. And you can use time windows, like you can have safety data from say 2011 to 2018 or whatever. And you can put time windows so you can see how your crash data is changing every year so you can start locating those areas that are giving you trouble. This is just from a safety perspective. I don't know how many safety people are in here. But, you know, using your data visualization in a way that really tells you maybe something a little bit more than what you might get from a tabular situation. That's what this whole thing is about, visualizing the data so maybe you can pull out, uh, a, maybe the story is maybe more uh, fully told for you than what you're seeing on a spreadsheet. So very, uh, very cool features that or in there. So Scott, I think your perspective would be good as far as the learning curve because you came in, um, your computer skills are better than average, but I mean, I would like your perspective actually from, from that. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> the hardest thing I had to do was uh, pull the data in. Once I realized how to actually take the data in, what it was was I just created a huge Excel spreadsheet and just sucked it in. And then everything was there. And um, as soon as I, I created my first little graphic in about you know 10 seconds after that, I was like, OK, let me do, I think it's on and off system bridges or something. I want to know how many on system bridges, how many off system. And I just put it up, and it gave me a nice little circle. And it had you know on and off system bridges. And I started breaking things down from there. So very quickly, uh, I was up and running, creating some you know pretty attractive reports and things like that. I guess this concludes our session. Thank